Hello and welcome to this part of the module 4 for, for the SOLIDWORKS Advanced Features. Uh, we are looking at uh, flex, freeform and wrap features uh, in this part. So let's begin with a part file to demonstrate the uh, flex feature. These are some of the uncommonly used uh, SOLIDWORKS features uh, but again nevertheless it's always fun to learn the new types of features that can modify the uh, solid model. So let's begin the new sketch uh, with the uh, origin in the front plane. Uh, I'm not uh, going to be worried about uh, dimensions too much at this point. The purpose of this uh, tutorial is to explain uh, the concepts behind uh, all these different uh, SOLIDWORKS features. So I'm going to create uh, one rectangular cross section beam and then click on insert features and look for flex there are different options in the flex features such as bending twisting tapering or stretching and several other parameters the input parameters to uh, modify the solid model accordingly there are two trim planes, trim plane 1, trim plane 2, which basically decides uh, the extent of the feature modification for the flex part. So first thing that I'm going to do is select the solid model in this input window. So once I click on that, you would notice that the trim plane 1 and trim plane 2 appears on the two ends of the cross sections and also a triad appears with the default option being set at bending. Now, if you want to uh, change the, uh, you know, the bending uh, with the flex feature, uh, what you can do is to first check the extent of uh, the trim plane ones and trim plane two that can uh, go along in that direction. Similarly, the trim plane one can also be set as where we want the location for these planes in order to carry out uh, the uh, feature modification. I'm going to right click on the stream plane 2 and then as I move my cursor in either directions uh, we can see the bending is taking place and the parameters can be seen here on the left hand side where we could adjust in terms of the radius of curvature and also the angle for the bend and then accordingly the flex feature can be used. Okay, uh, Let's take a look at the twisting feature. So in the twisting feature again we can adjust the angle for the twist and as I uh, try to again uh, modify this uh, part file at the end I can again move the cursor and accordingly I can add the twist to the part. We can create ourselves a nice drill bit, something like this, by adding the flex feature in the solid model. Now some of the times we don't want the entire uh, model or the entire part to be affected by the flex feature but only a certain length of it. That is where the trim planes come into the picture. So if I right click and modify this feature for the twisting, uh, all I have to do is just basically get the trim plane 1 and place it at the desired location as we want. So the either of these operations, the bending, twisting or tapering or stretching would be affected only between these two trim planes, trim plane 1 and trim plane 2. If I click on the check mark, now we can see that only the portion between the trim planes 1 and 2 is going to be affected because of this uh, flex feature. So it's really a nice feature uh, and you can create a lot of uh, interesting solid models uh, based on this flex feature. Next we will be taking a look at the freeform feature. Let me go ahead and create a new part file first. Uh, in the front plane I'm going to make another uh, rectangular cross section and extrude it to 
complete the solid model. Now, as before, let's go to insert features freeform. These features are not routinely used in the SOLIDWORKS part modeling, but again, it is very interesting to know how these uh, different SOLIDWORKS features work so that they can be implemented uh, in slightly complicated parts. So first thing that we're going to do is the face settings. And we need to select the face on which we want to apply the freeform feature on a solid model. There are several uh, controlling parameters for the continuity on the four different uh, corners of this uh, selected face. There is a direction one and direction two for the symmetry. For example, if I click, uh, you would see a gray colored plane that divides it uh, along the x-axis direction to make the uh, plane of symmetry or direction two uh, is along the other lengthwise direction along the z direction to divide this into two parts of symmetry. So depending on which orientation the face is, uh, you can have the directions uh, of the symmetry created so that whatever the feature that you want to modify on one side of the symmetry plane, uh, it will be modified on the other uh, side of the plane as well. Uh, in a way, it works uh, very similar to the uh, mirror feature. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck that for a minute and then click on uh, the add curve. Or be, even before I do that, let me just uh, show about the uh, coordinate system. So by default, the natural coordinate system is used, as you can see, these grid lines. But if you want to use the user defined, it just, it's going to prompt a message that you're going to lose all the modifications. Click OK. And you, know, you can rotate this and uh, reorient the coordinate system as you would like. Okay. I'm going to change it back to the natural one. And if I click on add curves, I can add the curves wherever I want to place it along the grid lines on this face. If I click on the flip direction, then I can create the uh, curves on the transverse direction. If I click on the direction one symmetry and click on the add curve, or if I click on uh, the add curves uh, based on the uh, direction that we have it. So along the length direction, you can notice that as soon as I uh, clicked on the symmetry plane, uh, the green lines are also created on the other direction of the plane. If I click on flip direction and try to create the curve here, you would notice the uh, green colored lines are created on the other side of this plane of symmetry as well. So I'm going to uncheck these plane of symmetries right now and just go ahead and create the uh, add curve on one, one of the locations on this face. And then I'm going to add points on that curve. So if I click on add points, by default, some uh, certain number of points will be added. And you can change these parameters uh, in terms of the mesh density and so on. So once I click on the... Uh, you know, the control curve to add the points, okay? And then once I right click on one of the points and then again, uh, use the left mouse button on that point, you would see a triad uh, that will be created. And then we can pull this one of these directions uh, in order to deform this face, something like this. Uh, you can even change the angular orientation. You can play with these numbers down here uh, and then accordingly you can uh, modify the surface of this solid model using the freeform, freeform feature. And now we will be looking at the wrap feature. So let me start with a new part file and let's create a circular sketch in the front plane. I'm going to extrude it. All right. So the the way the wrap feature works is that whatever the uh, text or the sketch that you create uh, can be wrapped around a 
uh, circular or the cylindrical object. There are different ways of doing about this. Uh, so let's take a look at it. Uh, the first uh, way of creating the wrap. So on this uh, cylindrical object, I'm going to choose, uh, you know, uh, the one of the planes which is uh, tangential to the cylindrical surface, which means I'm going to going going to go to the reference geometry, click on the plane, and first option I'm going to select is the top plane, and the second option is the cylindrical face, so that a tangential plane can be created on it. And on this plane, I will be sketching. A sketch that I want to wrap it around. So uh, let me create a few sketch lines here and I'm gonna fast forward this uh, once I'm done with sketching. So what I'm going to be doing is um, uh, clicking on these lines in the form of a Z shape. And then I will be using the offset entities options for the uh, sketch with the distance of let's say uh, three millimeters and select this or you know let's increase the distance to more than three and let's make it uh, 10 which was there by default okay I'm gonna close the ends sorry Let's go to offset entities again and click on this click OK and now we will close the ends to make it a closed loop so if we have a sketch something like this that we've created on the uh, top plane and now we just want to wrap it around this uh, cylindrical object All right, so in order to do this, uh, I'm going to come out of the sketching mode. And under the features tab, you see the option wrap. So I'm gonna click on the wrap. And there are different ways of creating this wrap feature. One is the emboss uh, where uh, the sketch is gonna be extruded on the surface that you wanna wrap around, or the deboss, which means that there will be extruded cut or simply the scribe, which means that the surface will be split, but there will not be any uh, measurable amount of either extrusion uh, base or cut. The wrap method is also important, uh, the analytical or the spline surface, and then the input for the wrap parameters. The one is the sketch that we want to wrap, and on the surface that we want to wrap it around. So once I click on the surface that we want to wrap it around, it's gonna give us the preview of this. And once you're happy with that preview, uh, yeah, you can even uh, you know reverse the direction of the sketch. And then once you click OK, you can notice that uh, the wrap feature has been created on the solid model. Again, if I right click and edit this feature, we were on the scribe, so we couldn't see either extruded base or uh, the extruded cut. But if I go on the uh, emboss feature it's going to ask us uh, how much uh, should be the thickness five millimeters let's accept it by default and also it's going to ask us the pull direction the pull direction can be created by you know along any other direction uh, that we want to uh, have the extruded uh, length oriented to so if we uh, click OK the pull direction is basically the normal to the surface and you can see the uh, embossed wrap feature is created okay uh, again if I right click edit feature and if I click on the deboss and click OK then you would see the uh, extruded cut that will be created on the uh, surface of the object on which we want to wrap this particular sketch. So that's uh, fairly simple to use uh, and you can find several interesting 
uh, ways of uh, applying this uh, wrap feature on a particular object. The other uh, way of creating this wrap feature uh, is to first create a plane that is uh, at an offset with respect to the plane which is tangential to this cylindrical body. So if I go back to uh, the reference geometry and click on the plane and let's say I want to create uh, a plane which is offset offset with the top plane at uh, let's say a certain distance here and I'm going to click OK on that. So that's plane 2. Let me hide the plane 1 for a second. So on this plane 2 if I right click and uh, orient it normal to the viewpoint and go to sketch and let's say I use the text to uh, annotate. Uh, let me write it down uh, some text. Okay, And then I place that uh, somewhere. I can also increase the font size using the points option if I want to use uh, to increase the font size. Uh, and let me check if that's I can even go ahead and um, get more font size for this. And I click OK. So we have created some text on the uh, plane which is offset from the cylindrical object. Now I'm going to come out of the uh, sketching mode and again go to features wrap we need to create a click on the sketch so if it is difficult to click on the sketch from here uh, I can always expand this tree and then select the sketch that I want to wrap and again using either the emboss or deboss or the uh, scribe option for the wrap type I can wrap it around on the surface with whatever the desired thickness uh, if I can increase the thickness also um, and then click on the check mark let me hide the plane 2 for a moment and then you know that's how we can create the wrap feature projected from the plane. So that is with the emboss feature. Again, if I right click and edit and use the uh, deboss feature and then click OK, then we can see the letters seems to be carved out uh, from the face of that cylindrical object. Okay. So that is the uh, wrap feature as we can use it. And again, uh, once you know I shell this out with uh, you know a few uh, millimeters thickness and click OK, uh, you would notice that the thickness value is greater than the minimum radius of curvature because of the text which has been created here. So this may not work at this point. So I'm going to cancel here, go back to wrap feature edit it and I'm going to use the scribe uh, instead of emboss or deboss feature and then I'll use the shell feature on this face and see if it works so that way you can create uh, some of the interesting solid models for the uh, modeling of components using the SOLIDWORKS so that wraps up this uh, video tutorial on the Flex Freeform and the Wrap. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.